Molly? Hey, Zach. Nice place you have here. Where can I set up? Um, your room's the second door on the right. Thanks. Hey, Zach. You remember Maggie, don't you? Um, yeah. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Zach. Say, now that we're officially roommates, how'd you like to meet some of my other friends? Sure. Like who? Whoa, how'd you do that? Remember I was telling you about the cold seeps down here deep in the Gulf of Mexico? Yeah. Well, if you remember, cold seeps release chemicals like methane and hydrogen sulfide into the ocean, and even small amounts of oil. And because of this, they form a unique habitat. Around cold seeps, there are rock formations and reefs where some pretty cool creatures live. For instance, wherever you see cold seeps, you can usually find tube worms. Tube worms? You mean those things are animals? Yep. Tube worms are pretty amazing. They look like bamboo. How do they eat? Good question. Up where there's sunlight, the food web starts with plants, or in the shallow ocean, phytoplankton. They use photosynthesis to convert sunlight into a food source. But down in the deep ocean, where there's no sunlight, some animals rely on a process called chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis is where, instead of sunlight, chemicals from the cold seep are converted into energy to fuel the deep sea food web. This happens with tube worms. Inside tube worms live specialized chemosynthetic bacteria. It's a symbiotic relationship. In exchange for a safe place to live, the bacteria inside tube worms convert chemicals from the cold seep into a food source for the tube worm. Whoa, my mind is officially blown. This is a cold seep with a brine pool. It's kind of a lake on the bottom of the ocean. How's that work? The water in the lake is saturated with salt. In the gulf, this super salty water is squeezed up from the sediments at the cold seep. It doesn't go anywhere because it's more dense than the seawater around it. So it settles and forms basins and pools on the seafloor. The oil and gas flowing from the cold seeps will slow down over time. And eventually, deep sea corals colonize the area. Whoa! There's actually coral living way down here? Yep. And just like the coral reefs near the surface, these reefs provide important habitat for lots of animals. Want to meet some of them? Sure. That's a chimera. It's related to a shark. And there are all kinds of crabs and other crustaceans. There's a squat lobster. Boy, he needs some dental work. That's an anglerfish. Down here, some animals can create their own light. It's called bioluminescence. Why do they need light? All sorts of reasons. They use light to lure prey, attract mates, confuse predators, warn others. When your world is pitch black, you adapt by using light to communicate. Wow, I thought the deep ocean was just a, a lifeless void. When it comes to understanding the ocean, we've barely scratched the surface. That's why we have to get the word out. Which reminds me, we should probably be getting back to our global communications headquarters. You mean, our apartment? Yep, there's work to do. Like, paint the bathroom? No, that's not where I'm going with this conversation. You mean like, wallpaper the bathroom? No, I'm talking about something much bigger. Wallpaper the living room? No. What do you think of the couch? You sit on it too much. Thank you.